having a uh, internet issues. It says we're live. We're live. Okay, so we just have to wait a couple minutes for people to join us. Um, their Facebook should be going off telling them that we're live. Um, any second. Um, okay, so while we wait for that, um, do you, uh, what's your next big project? Well, I am preparing for an exhibition. And so I can't show anybody anything because it's like behind the scenes stuff. So other than that, uh, I've been working on some quilts for family and whatever. I did make a quilt out of the migration fabric. It's it's basically chevron. So it looks like the geese that are flying. I love that look, Beth. It's yeah. like a white white negative background with all the fabric in a chevron. And it just, it, it reminds me of the birds flying. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. with the white background, it doesn't look pretty modern. It looks, I'm gonna go get it. Okay. Okay, while well, she's going to get the quilt, I'd like to welcome all of you to Live at Noon with Fabric Chicks. We have Lorraine Turner today with Calico Horses. Um, you can find all of Lorraine's stuff on calicohorses.com. And she's got a new line of fabric she's gonna be telling us all about. Um, hi, Peggy. Hi, Christy. Hi, Anna. Um, hi, Kathleen. Good morning, Vicki. Hi, Diana. It's lunchtime for you, I think. Well, it's lunchtime for us, really, except for we're, you know, we eat when we can. Um, oh, Diane said her her Facebook beeped at her, so she needed to log in. Hi, Louise. <laughs> and, oh, Lynn is driving. Lynn, I hope you're not driving and watching us at the same time. That could be disastrous. Hey, Mary. Hey, Cindy. Um, okay, so go ahead, Lorraine. Show us what, what you've got. So Lorraine is just showing while we're waiting for people to log on. Lorraine is going to show us what she's working on. Yeah, this is yeah. a quilt top with the migration fabrics that we that Beth now has in the store. And I just did it in a chevron pattern because I wanted to, I wanted to, well, it's upside down. I wanted to like, you know, emulate the geese, the birds in flight in migration. So it's just a big chevron. Oh, I love it. I'm loving it because you can really see the different fabrics. Yeah. And this has all of the skews in it. And so it just goes and it goes all the way to the bottom. It does a nice chevron. I love that because it doesn't cut the patterns up too much. Do you, no, I, um, who, whose pattern is it? Is it a pattern we can purchase or? Yeah, it's a pattern you can purchase. I did a download of a PDF and I'll, I'll, let me find it right now. I think it's called. No, no, no. We can get it. To, okay. We can get. I can get it. I can get to the link. But I really love this Beth because one of the things, and you can see, look, there's a tail. You can see the the whales. One of the right. things about my fabric is that it's perfect for fussy cutting. But if you're going to be doing a quilt like this and you're making blocks, you want to see the fabric. And so I found this pattern because I thought, man, this is a great way to really show off all the fabrics. Right. And this, right. you know, in this pattern, we've talked about this. This pattern here, um, overhead terrain, you can cut that. I mean, there, there's not a bad place to cut it. It's everything. It's got lakes and canyons, and it's this one uh, over here. This one. With the waterfall, yeah. With the waterfall. I mean, when you when I started to, to create this little quilt, um, I started cutting the blocks out, and I was like, man, there's not a bad cut here. <laughs> everything works in this fabric. So mm -hmm. that's nice. Uh, that's nice as a designer because I, I'm – I'm more, as you know, I'm more of a fabric collage artist. And so when I'm designing, I have people that um, chirp in, like my sister, Patty, who's a quilter. So she'll she'll give me some advice and say to me, you know, I, I, I that's too close together. or We need to have that a little bit further apart for fussy cutting and whatever. And so I've listened to her and that's been really helpful for me because that's not my background. Right, my background. right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, wait, hang on a second. Hi, Nan. Um, hi, Leilani and Carolyn and Phyllis and Nancy. Nancy says she's already purchased the fabrics. Aww. All right, Nancy, type in there and tell us what you're going to do with them. Yep. And Nan Willis, is she here? Yep, she's here. Oh, Nan, hello. Nan has been hiding in the background somewhere, but I've really missed um, engaging with her. So thank you, Nan, for tuning in. You have to remember, everybody, this is a wonderful opportunity for me to, to tune in with Beth, but I don't see your comments. So Beth has to read everything to me because I'm not able to see the scroll and all that. So if I miss you, I remember last time I did an interview, people were making comments and asking me questions that I couldn't answer because I really don't know. But, but I promise I will go back on Beth's Facebook Live and answer any questions if that, that you have. So yeah, first of all... So Vicki says, I love the design you chose, Lorraine. It's like a paint box color palette for reference. 
Yes, it's very, very bright. Um, and all of my fabrics will be, this is the way I design up. If you look at any of my fabric collage work, I'm known for color. And so it was a natural, it's a natural thing. When you look at my fabrics, you're gonna see color. That's just the way I don't. You're not probably never gonna see real pastels. The pastels will be kept in the background but you'll be seeing a lot of bold color. So thank you for that. I appreciate you noticing that. And while I'm uh, talking about that, Beth, do you still have the Calico Horses threads by Aurifil? Um, I do not think we do. I think we sold the last one. Are okay. they still doing it? No, and that's what I wanted to, I was just gonna say, if anybody um, has not gotten those, you should get them because they're not gonna be around. They are discontinuing yeah. them only because of the pandemic. We, you know, free, or, um, RFL has to go in the direction. They have new designers, they have new people coming up and they're giving everybody a shot. So that's the way it goes. So I'm glad to hear that you sold them, that's great. Yes, yep. So okay. we're talking about migration today. And I'm hoping all of you have um, ordered yours or gotten yours because from what I hear, they're flying out the door. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> but we'll put them on this Friday celebration again. Okay, okay. So what uh, what I wanted to um, talk to you about was the inspiration behind this design. And some of you may have already heard about it and have tuned in or seen me talking on Free Spirit. But the thing that's happening um, since I've designed this fabric is I'm getting a lot more, I'm getting a lot more questions about the line. First and foremost, all of my work supports endangered animals worldwide. And this particular line, everything that you purchase, just understand that as a designer, I get paid by royalties and a percentage of my royalties go to help endangered animals. And each line that you see me bring out will go, have a different animal that I will help. Now, right now, the Atlantic right whale, and this is not something I dwell on. I don't, I don't dwell on animals that are near extinction. It's not something you're gonna see in my line because I'm, I'm always looking for the glass half full and I'm always looking for uh, solutions and that's that's the direction i'm going to go but i chose a group the marine animal response society because they're helping the atlantic right whale who is on the brink of extinction now the humpbacks are in the fabric and so i featured the humpbacks and i featured whales where the humpbacks? i don't know where the humpbacks are got a lot of fabric here beth there's, Good. there's that's exciting there is 12 skews and yeah 12 skews in in uh this line and so this is the humpback whale and the marine animal response society and I, I just have to plug them because this is close to my heart so when you see these um fabrics come out just know that there's a, there's something behind the story there's always going to be something behind the fabrics and this particular line is helping the marine animal response society that's a bunch of guys in a boat I call it boots on the ground. There's a very, very small organization there in Nova Scotia and they cut the whales from the nets. The reason these, these animals are on the brink of extinction is because they're getting caught in fishermen's net, uh, global warming and just overfishing of the area for them. So just be aware of that. When you see my fabrics, every line I bring out, I'm, I'm doing it to help somebody. So this is the humpback whales. This is, this is one I really wanna, I wanna just tell you guys you have to get a yard of this. I started playing with this and, and my sister started playing with this and we're finding that we're cutting off tails and fins and you know, you need to, you need to be able to see every piece of this. Look at this, look at this. This is a, this is a humpback whale that's going underwater. So he's on the top and he's rolling. Okay. So these are all the different scenes that you're going to see breaching whales. You don't want to miss you don't want to miss this when you go, there's a tail, there's a big tail. You don't want to miss this as you're cutting because you've got some room to do some nice fussy cutting, but just get some extra. That's all I'm telling you. Just get some extra because uh, Beth and I just had a little chat before we went live that this particular line, um, it's not something, I'm not a big popular designer. I'm just be flat out with you. I'm not tulip pink. And so when the stores put their orders in, that's it. And they, they launched this in July. The stores have only so much time to order and then they cut it off and there's no more to be had. And so even if Beth wants to get more, she can't get more. So I'm telling you right now, if you want this fabric, if you want this fabric, get it. And if, and not only just get it, but go ahead and get a yard, of, especially this. I'm just going to push this one. Um, this is very, very um, just important. To, to, you, you just don't want to cut off anything. So that's that. The puffins, and the same thing with the puffins and the monarchs. Now, the puffins and the monarchs, people asked me, I love this part. They were like, you know, I'm, 
involved in science, and I don't think puffins and monarchs fly together. Now, I did not create this line of fabrics um, with that intention. It was just friends in flight. You know, they both fly. That's what this is. So don't look for any deep meanings in this one. This is puffins and monarchs that are both migrating. So you want to get you want to get enough of this as well. Getting yard of this. I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm telling you right now. I'm starting to to really play with these fabrics, and you you need you need more than you think you do just for these particular ones. Um, going along with the monarchs, we've got the butterfly bush petals. So butterfly bush petals, if you know anything, and if you have them in your neck, the wood, it's just a beautiful plant that the butterflies are attracted to. When we are helping uh, the animals that are in this, that are depicted in this, one of the ways that I love to do is to um, to find out the, 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 the different, the topography, topography, excuse me, that they live in, um, what are their favorite places? And so that's, that is the little part that I add into my fabrics. And so when you looked at even calico horses, you're going to see sage, you're going to see things, the calico mountains, you're going to see things that are supportive of the story and the main characters of the story. And, that, and uh, for this, it's the migratory animals. If anybody has any questions, let me know, but I love this print. Okay. No. Um, they're just saying they love the puffins. Um, Nancy says she got a yard of the whales. Good. I had a gal yesterday in the shop. She bought um, a yard and a half because she was going to make um, pillowcases with the puffins. And ah, then nice. another gal bought three yards because she was making pajama bottoms. So, oh, that's nice. All kinds of fun stuff you can do with it. I had a woman from Iceland say to me, she, she came on my Instagram thing and said, thank you, thank you, thank you. I live in Iceland. I'm familiar with puffins out there. They're so dear to us and there's not fabric out there that's not de depicting them in an anatomically correct way they're always like little goofy cartoony things and i right. you know I, I you're never gonna see that in my line mm -hmm. this one beth i i i love actually love this one i think i'm gonna put matter of fact on this quilt that i'm making the one i showed you this is gonna be the binding i'm gonna bind it with Perfect. this and it's gonna it's gonna really look great so right. this is wonderful right. wonderful Wonderful for sashing and binding. And now somebody is say posted that she's going to look for these on Friday's sale. She should have purchased them last week. It's true, girls. When I show you something, you should purchase it right away, no matter what it is. Yeah, and and remember, as I told you, um, you well, I see this in myself when I'm looking at something, and then I go back. I like you put it in your shopping cart, and you go back, and it's like gone. I I just feel that for this particular for this particular line, this this is going to be like calico horses and it, it is it is flying out the door i've been i've been hearing from a lot of shops that are carrying it but i was telling beth the funny thing to me is that the shop owners saw the lookbook or they saw it online or however shop owners order fabrics these days without any sales reps or anybody helping them and they look at pictures and they you know they're like oh, i'll give it a shot whatever and then it gets into their store like they, they arrive in their stores and they go crazy now i didn't realize that they didn't really you know, it's almost like they don't trust me. They didn't buy calico horses. They sold a bunch of whales and puffins and figured, oh, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give this woman a shot. Then when the fabric comes in, it's flying out the door. Right, right. Well, nice, and it's hard nice when you buy fabric because you only see like a two inch swatch. So you uh, don't get the whole effect because those are pretty big prints. That's crazy, isn't it? I mean, how yeah. do you even know what you're looking at? No, oh. a lot of times you don't. Oh, well, yeah. This one. I know my sister now, uh, and just something that you know, because I had it before Beth. The reason I have it before Beth is that part of my payment as a designer is I get 15 yards of fabric. So 15 yards of fabric get dumped in my lap and I've got all this fabric. Well, lucky for me, I have sisters and so. <laughs> so my one sister contacted me today and wanted more of this. This is the um, Siberian crane, a Siberian crane looking down at them. So that means this is a bird's eye view of birds. And there's clouds in there and it's just a great coordinating fabric and I, you're going to use it with many things it's got lots of color in it it's a fun and it is multi-directional the, the um, cranes are going in both directions the scale of it is a nice scale for for just given that you know that great transition i think that uh, you're going to love this fabric and then diana uh, says she grows milkweed for the monarch butterflies uh, they need all the help they can get. They really do. They really mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. um, this, and here's another thing Free Spirit didn't know. And you know what? I'm going to blame it, Free Spirit, because they have so many designers. That's another thing we can talk about real quick. When I became a designer with Free Spirit in 2019, 
they had 30 designers, 30. They are now, I think, over 70. So that uh, means during that- During the pandemic? Yeah. And during oh the pandemic, they, what they did was they bought up other fabric companies. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? And then acquired that team of artists. Yeah. So right. now I had them marketing and promoting me among, you know, another 29 artists. Now I'm just a drop in the bucket. And I mean that sincerely. Right. And if I don't survive as a designer, I don't think it's because I can't draw. But I think that money talks. I mean, it really does. And so I just want to be very honest with all of you that I love doing this work, but I've, I've already kind of talk, told myself that financially for a business to survive and to grow, they're looking, they're looking at, they're looking at this. Well, so I'm, I'm hoping. A crazy transition in the fabric industry. Mm -hmm. um, every, I, you know, businesses have just been really hit hard with the pandemic. Yes. And yes. just getting the gray goods to do the printing on is hard. Getting things shipped, like it's just kind of a mess everywhere. Um, it really is, and it's and I, I know as a, as someone that's in the business now and watching all this, I'm 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 smart enough to understand that if, if when they count the beans, if there's not enough beans for Lorraine Turner, then they're going to basically say thank you very much. It's been really nice knowing you. So I'm doing my best to stay afloat here. And what you do, what you can do, all of you can do, is if you make something with my fabric, if you're excited about my fabric, go ahead and hashtag Free Spirit Fabrics. Go on their Facebook page. Tell them you love the fabric. You know, that would be a really great way to help me. So as I go forward, they know that I am someone that they might want to consider keeping. You know, I'm not saying that I'm, I haven't been given the can, but I'm just telling you that, you know, right. I, have to, I have to be practical. I just have to be practical. Well, and your fabric is very different than than what we've seen, which is why I love it. But mm. I do think for a lot of traditional quilters, it's a little bit more edgy than they're comfortable with. Possibly. But like in the chevron quilt that you just showed, it's fabulous. Mm. It's fabulous for that. Yeah, it works for that. And uh, that's why, I, again, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking at it as how can I best display the art that's in it? Right. Because it is, it's filled with art. You're not gonna see a bunch of circles and squares and dance like squiggly lines with me that's not how i work now speaking of lines i do have some squiggly lines on this um this one is the migratory map and the migratory map actually has the migratory patterns of these animals this isn't just me going oh you know it looks really good to put a turtle over there these are the maps i studied maps and charts and i created the migratory pattern if you were to see everything was migrating at the same time this is what it would be looking like so it's got air currents, it's got water currents, it's got, it's got a lot of animals in it. And it's another fun fabric. I think you'll enjoy this fabric. Well, this, Diane Kubo just posted, she said she was at a virtual art show tour last week. It is actually in Atlanta and she'll be going for real shortly, but it's called 3 billion. It references 3 billion birds lost every year. There is actually a few uh, artist in the show, but various others as well. Um, I emailed them about you and the, the challenge. So that is so touching. About your challenge. That's very nice of you, Diane. Thank you. That's very touching. Um, you know, you can't save them all. I mean, that, no, my heart just did a flip just now. My, you can't save them all, but I'm doing my best. And so are you by just raising awareness and staying true to that because um, we are all guardians of this planet. Let's just say that we're all guardians sure. of this planet. So this is on the move. This is a fun piece. Beth is telling me she doesn't know if she even has this. I don't know. You, so she put this on the celebration, I think. Did you put this on celebration last week? We had the whole line on. It came in Friday morning. So we got numbers on it real quick and put it on Friday's post on Friday's mm -hmm. sale. And then we um, got all of those shipped out because a lot of them need it for the Monarch Butterfly Challenge, which yes. you're going to talk about later. Um, about yeah. Um, but we do have fat quarter collections left of the complete line. We still have quite a bit. So we'll put it good. on Friday sale again. That's great. That's really good to hear. I think that you're going to have, you're going to have fun with these pieces. They're like, they are like a box of crayons, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> Nice. Well, and I love that one. If you cut it on the bias for binding, it would just cut uh, anything Yeah. I love it because as I was cutting it for my sisters, I realized it that no matter where I cut it, they still are getting, like, they, they bought enough of it. They got enough of it so that they have uh, repeats. I mean, you can really use it for everything. My sister, Susan, who is, works, she does leather work. So she does these amazing leather pocketbooks. 
it's called Susan, Tur Susan Patterson Originals. She's using my fabric as lining her bags. So and I love this about my sisters. Like they're like, we didn't know that you were this good. <laughs> oh my goodness. I know. I know. You always take for granted what's closest to you. <laughs> No, she said to me, I went into fabric shops and I've never seen anything like this. I'm like, I know that's what people are telling me. <laughs> I love my sister. She is a, she's a rodeo. Uh, she's, she's a, she does competition rodeo stuff. So she's a Western horse, goes to all the shows, wins championships, and she's three years older than me. <laughs> right, right. Oh my gosh. So Sue is really smart. Sue's just typing in. She wants a yard of the one you just showed. Um, cause she doesn't want to wait till Friday in case it's all gone. <laughs> Good point. So these are the wildebeest, wildebeest in motion. And oh, that's these my favorite are, one actually. Is it really? Yeah. I remember yeah. when I was designing this, I gave Beth a sneak peek at it and she loved it. That was a good sign. Beth, Beth loves, Beth loves things that aren't, aren't normal. <laughs> Right, right. I don't know what that says about me, but I do love different things. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go with this nice, bright uh, tomato red background because I just think that it's it's just it's got a lot of pop to it. And when I when I look at it in this quilt, the one that I just did, every time you see that red pop, it just oops, it looks fantastic. Yes. So yeah, yeah. It really, it really works. Real cheese sandwich. It just it's really really doing well. So what else do I have to show you? The animal tracks, now the animal tracks are, are a wonderful um, tone on tone. And I did this in two colorways. I did this in gold with some orange in it. Actually, it's gold with gold, Beth. Wouldn't you say it's like a gold with- Yeah, I think it's gold on gold. And the gold with, one has been the most popular. Has it? Look how good yeah. it looks with these fabrics. How do we yeah. do the purple? Because everybody loves purple, but the gold has, has sold more. Yep, see that? See how that well it coordinates? And then the purple is the, I like, I just like having a dark tone on tone because I do like using darks and that looks great with a lot of the fabrics too. This looks good with the um, whales. This looks great with the whales. And, and for the, the chevron quilt, do you need fat quarters or what do you need for that quilt? I think it's fat quarters. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll Lynn, the instructions for you. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know because Lynn want, Lynn is not, she's very traditional. Like might, like might love Civil War stuff, but she still loves us and she still joins us on our crazy artistic journey. But yeah. she, doesn't, she doesn't really dabble too much in it, but she said she would definitely do the chevron quilt. Okay. What is the name of this fabric? I thought I had it near me, but I don't. I think it's called something like out of the blue or blue something because they did it with a they they the person that designed it Wendy Shepard did it with blues and so it's called like blue lob cabin or something and uh, I don't I don't I for, I forget I don't want to don't don't we'll hold me to it, it. I'll, I'll find it I'll, I'll figure it out by Friday I'm glad that you like my little quilt as you know I'm not a quilter no, it's super <laughs> my, cute. my husband says I have to stop saying that though because I made a bunch of quilts right you're a quilter now. I know I can't stop. I can't say anything. All right, so this is this is overhead terrain. This has got a I lot do of color. On it. So this has um, mountains and canyons, waterfalls, lakes. Just there's just a lot you can do with this fabric. Again, when you cut this fabric up, there's not a bad place to cut it. I think this is a there's just a lot you can do with this fabric. And I had fun with it in this particular quilt. What else do I have? To, oh, the icebergs. So the icebergs, I remember when I first designed this, I looked at lots and lots of references to do icebergs. And they're all blues and teals and um, just uh, what, what a natural iceberg looks like. So I wanted to take it in a new direction. I wanted to give you something that was more um, just it still looks just like icebergs, but you get all those beautiful colors that coordinate fantastic with the line. And as you know, and you may not know, the whales, the humpback whales, they they migrate to the polar regions of the planet. So they're either gonna go north or they're gonna go south. And so you're gonna always find whales with icebergs. That's that's these these humpback whales, that's where they're headed. So it's just a nice they it's a nice team. They go well together. This is a fun piece. So what else do I have, Beth? What am I missing? Hmm. I think I got them all. Oh, no. Um, migratory map. 
Yeah, I think that's it. That's 12 SKUs. That's it. That's the fabric. Right. There's a lot of it. And it's um, it's very colorful. It's a lot I of fun. Love, I love a collection with 12 SKUs because it gives you enough to play with, but it's not so much it's overwhelming. You know, like the bigger collections are just too much. Well, I was thinking about that because as a store, when you go to purchase a line that's, that you want it to be together so that, the, so that you know, they, they want you know, they want to purchase something that goes together. You've, you've got all these right. colors and you want something to coordinate with it. But you're looking, this is something I have to remember this because I'm in the comics business. And I know that Dean, when he's publishing books, we're up against a lot, a lot of books. So when you go into the, I remember the first time he took me into a section with like graphic novels and we looked at it. It was unlimited. I mean, it was just felt like it went on forever. And I said, how in the world do people pick our books out of all this? You know, that's a lot. Same thing right. with the fabric with with you as a as a shop owner. You know your clients. I know you know your market. And so right. you just have to go with your gut and trust it because you've been in the business long enough. But for yeah. new shop owners that have never heard of me, oh. they're like, hmm, I don't know. Will the beast like <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> no, it would make them nervous. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, anybody have any questions for me? No, no. They, you know what? They all got kind of smart, and they're just putting in their orders in the. Um, <laughs> uh, Mary B said, "Lorraine is the hugs with horses closed." On the what? The hugs with horses is that closed, or can they still? Oh no, the hugs with horses is open until March thirtieth. March 30th, they're keeping that available for you for March 30th because with a pandemic and with some late starts and they had um, they had some technical difficulties with me doing the broadcast and whatever. So we've extended that deadline, March 30th. So, and you know, it's never too late to give a hug. D don't ever, don't, don't ever think you're too late to give a hug because even if it was a March 30th and passed and you're still working on your little horse, you can still send it and give a hug. Anybody can Perfect. do it. Perfect. Let's talk about the Monarch Challenge. I have a sewing art challenge, and I have a pattern that's available. And this pattern is to help you create a, sew a piece of sewing, piece of art, sorry, piece of art. And this will help save our monarchs.org. So all of the patterns are $20. Buy the pattern, even if you're not going to sew it, because it all goes to the Monarchs. It's Everything I did last year for the koalas, we raised over $600, $660 we raised for the koalas. And this one's already up there. It's, get, it's, it's getting there. So I'm really pleased with that because that will help the monarchs. So go and my website, calicohorses.com. There's a link. I don't know if that's going to pop it in there or not. But the challenge, sewing art challenge, I pushed the deadline back because Free Spirit pushed the arrival of the fabrics back. So I pushed that deadline back. I think it is now May 30th, which was... It was March, then it was April, then it's now it's May 30th. But um, what I wanted to say about it in the rules of this pat with the rules of this contest, you only need to use a portion of this pattern. So that means if you are going to say to yourself, I don't really want to do all these flowers, find a flower that you like and make your own, make your own art, make your own illustration. That's what the judge is looking for. Susan Brubaker Knapp from Quilting Arts TV is the judge. She's a very, very good, fine artist, textile artist. Um, She's the host of Quilting Arts TV, and she's she's um, she's dynamite artist herself. So she's looking for that. She's looking for you to follow what we put down as the rules and the guidelines. One of the things I added this year, and it was after talking to Beth last year, is that I added some hand handwork. I want to see handwork. It doesn't have to be a lot. Just I want to see what you can do with this. Maybe you're going to put buttons in the flowers. I don't know. I'm just telling you that you can do beading. You can do crochet. You can do any kind of handwork that you seem to like to do, you can pull that back out and say, oh, you know what? I've always wanted to do some embroidery work. Just do it. The whole reason I'm doing this is to get you out of that same old, same old, same old thing and try something new. So that's why this pattern is uh, part of the rules are use 50% of my fabrics. You only have to use 50% of my fabrics. If you don't like this particular monarch and you want to use a different monarch, use a different monarch. But that means you have to use other part of the fabric pattern you can put this on a background that's exotic you can have a sunset you can have it in your water you can have it in a garden think of what you know just have fun with it this is what this the sewing challenge was about was to challenge you to have fun and create some art that you're gonna oh you're gonna love it and you can make it any size it can be any size you want you can blow it up you can copy it you can cut it apart you can do whatever you want 
And you can even make it a small, even if you're going to do something on a purse, if you said, oh, you know, I'm going to use Lorraine's fabric and I'm going to create a purse with it and I'm going to have the butterfly um, embroidered or whatever. Just think of it that way. Step outside of your comfort zone a little bit and have fun with this. And remember, you're helping monarchs. That's what this is all about. Perfect. Okay. And is there a thread line to go with the migration line? The same exact threads as the calico horses. And I, I mean, that doesn't have many more, so I don't know, but the calico right. horses threads are the threads. And if you can find them, they are, they are, they're not going to be here anymore. Um, I don't think, no, I don't, I don't, I know that the, some stores have a few left. I mean, you know, Beth doesn't have any, and I'm not going to talk about other stores. So there you go. Well, and we do have um, loose threads that would be the colors that would be in the collection if you had. Ah, it. So we can, absolutely we can perfect. So if you look at, you can definitely yeah. put a collection together, Beth, that will match because you can just look at the calico horses. They're always going to be those colors. It's bright right. and uh, color box, cra color crayon, you know, like a box of crayons. That's what you're always going to have. Right, right. Well, and I just, I just want to throw this in there in case you have anybody that's still looking for the Calico Horses quilt kit. Um, Gracie mm. is cleaning up the back room. And so she just uncovered a couple. So we have some of the Calico Horses quilt kit that you originally did. Well, that Calico Horse uh, fabric also, as you know, that, that was very, that sold very fast. But what the good news about the Calico Horses is that all of my fabrics, all of these fabrics, blend beautifully with the calico horses just to, yes. if, if you have them you're going to want to be able to i mean you can just play with them you can fussy cut them right. um i'm doing some fabric collage work using my fabrics and you'll look for that you'll see that i'm going to be posting some of that but i'm going to be using my line to do some fabric collage art and show you just how easy it is to take this and make some some fun art mm -hmm. and um another question that i got was do um, I think that on the challenge, they have to use certain Aurifil threads. I want to see somewhere in the collection, somewhere in your art, 12 weight. It could be any color, just okay. 12 weight thread. And we'll and the judge will be able to see it because you're going to send in a detailed photo. You're going to zoom in and show us the 12 weight and, and we'll be able to see it. Okay, perfect. And oh Beth has gosh. that. I, I just have to talk. Yeah, I do have the 12 weight in the white and the black. Um, which I think is what you use quite a bit for their eyes, maybe? Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Um, okay, I just have to talk and, and things just sell. Dorothy Gerard, um, she wants the horse kit. Oh, good, Dorothy. That's fantastic because you can't, uh, Beth, Beth uncovered it. That means it's got the navy horses in it that nobody can find, right, Beth? Yeah, yep. It's the original so that means quilt uh, that you did. Yeah, there you go. So even just getting the fabric is fantastic for that. Right. And then Diane, I'm not that. sure how much it is, but I'll let you know for Friday's sale. Um, okay. This is this is like our lives have become just like shopping market experiences. <laughs> so if you guys aren't familiar with us, if you're joining and you're not used to fabric chicks, you can just comment in the comments and we just start start you a shopping cart. Now, Beth also carries my fabric collage patterns, and I don't know what she has in the store, and we haven't talked recently, but she's got my fabric collage patterns. Those fabric collage patterns are what I love, what, I'm, what I've done, Beth, is I've done a six-part how-to, step-by-step, exactly how I teach, uh, if I was to teach a webinar, teach a workshop, how to do that fabric collage. And that's for line art patterns, or it's for a photo. I, I it's a step-by-step -step blog. You can get on my website, calicohorses.com, and they are perfect, and they really do uh, marry the fabric collage patterns that I have created. And they're out there, and they're available, and Beth does have them. And if she doesn't have them, she'll she'll have them for you if you want them. Right, right. No, we still have several of them. Um, mm -hmm. so, the, so they can just go to your website, and there's mm -hmm. just for free, there's instructions. There's a blog. There's instructions. Collage. Yep. It's one through six. Uh -huh. One through six and um, step one through six, and you'll be able to take that pattern that you buy from Beth and say, okay, I've got the pattern. It's a polar bear. What do I do now? And and as you're reading my instructions for the pattern, you can always refer back to the blog and say, oh, that's what she's talking about. That's what she meant. Because it's I can't put that all in the pattern, you know? Right. No, it's so hard to explain it in a, you know, four or five page written pattern 
what you're actually doing. It's so much easier yeah. to demo it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and to get photos and close ups and all that good stuff. Yeah. Uh, in the future, look for me to do podcasts. Um, that's another thing, Beth. Um, things have been happening for me. I've been interviewed for Fiber Talk, which is a uh, fiber artist. Um, that's going to be coming out in March. Um, Beth interviewed me today. And I'm going to be interviewed in the UK for a stitchery uh, group in the uh, United Kingdom. And that's next week they're going to be interviewing me. So I'm going to, I've been thinking about this. I went to my own podcast because I realized that I get so many questions about the art that I want to basically have a conversation about your questions. So if you have specific questions, it's easier for me just to talk about them. You know, it's just right. like I can just for do sure. that. Instead mm -hmm. of trying to write and send all these emails and whatever, I think I'm gonna. Right. I think the podcast is gonna be. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. Do it once a month and uh, look for that. You can find that in my. You'll put, find that on my Facebook page and you can find that on my website once I launch. So look Perfect. for that. Perfect. That's exciting. Well, and I and I do Tuesdays with Turner Beth every single Tuesday at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time. You can see I I go in depth, pretty much in depth on the work that I've been doing and show you some behind. I'll show you exactly how I great it you know you're seeing the final pieces but i talk a little about it to get you started to get mm -hmm. you in the move in the right direction yeah and um uh, mary vd i she put podcast with a question mark so i'm not sure if she wants you to describe what a podcast is but it's basically like a kind of like a, it's radio a talk show, show sort of yeah a talk it's, show. it's recorded so it's not like if you miss it it's like oh i missed it you can you can catch me because there's a lot of people that tune in from all around the world um, if Vicky here is, is, is Vicky Ledby here? She's from no, Australia. I don't think so. Okay. Well, so that, unless they're commenting, it doesn't tell me who's here. Oh, I see. I see. So we have people from all over the world and they, and they tune in to hear me even in the Tuesday with Turner, they'll hear it just like that. They'll, they'll tune in later and they'll watch it. But a podcast is a, is an audio thing. So you would tune into, you'd go instead of YouTube, you'd go to the, whatever has the podcast and just hit play and you could be washing the dishes and you know, doing something in the right. home and listening to this. And I, um, I've started, started listening to some really good fiber art, uh, podcasts lately. And I, and Susan Brubaker Knapp does one with quilting arts and it's good. And so if you, so if you ever find yourself you say, you know, I'm going to give this a try, just give it a try. You, you might like it. You might find it's for you. It's not for everybody, but you might like it. So that's it for me. I think that's it. I'm, I've talked about this pattern. I've showed you all my fabrics. Um, Upcoming things for me, I have a retreat coming up in Hudson River Valley, New York, supposedly in August. We don't know if this is going to happen, people. You know we don't know this. I don't think that Beth can, she doesn't, she can't predict no, what's going to happen this summer. No, it's, right, it's so crazy right now that whether retreats are going to happen, whether shows are going to happen. I mean, I don't know. It's just kind of a crazy time. You don't know if you're going to be able to go to the grocery store at this point. I'm fortunate enough. My husband gets so rapidly. Yeah. Dean gets a second shot tomorrow, and I get my second shot end of March. So right. I feel more. I feel. I mean, I'm still wearing a mask. I'm still social distancing. I'm still doing what everybody's telling me to do. I'm following the rules here, but I know that there's different people that are asking me to teach and asking me to come. And the world is not ready for me. I don't think the world's ready for me yet. So, <laughs> so that's well, the story. And I haven't. I I'm not been doing many webinars either. What'd right. You say? No, I don't think I, it's just kind of a crazy time. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm doing one hour. If you go to my website, if you go to my website, you'll see I'm doing two one hour demonstrations. I've really had to cut back on webinars only because I'm preparing for a large exhibition that I'm going to be creating art for. And it really takes my time. I mean, I have to really focus and do the art. I love teaching all of you, but I have to be honest with you. There's times when we have to set up boundaries. All of us have to set up boundaries and it, it gives us some um, personal space. And it's not that I don't love all of you and love uh, coming and teaching and being all over the world, but I really have to concentrate on my art at times and give myself some peace of mind, really, because I love doing this work. I love, right. love, love art. I love art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Lynn says the world is definitely ready and Vicki is here. Welcome, Vicki from Australia. Ah, uh, Vicki's such um, a sweetheart. Diana, uh -huh. Diana says there is a show in Kiss Me, Florida, around October 10th, and her husband already made reservations down there. Oh, wonderful! Good for That's you. That's pretty exciting. For you. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Glad to so, hear it. Glad to hear it. 
Perfect. Well, Lorraine, I want to thank you for, for coming on with us. Um, for, uh, once Lorraine, uh, stay tuned because we are, um, we, if you're, if you followed us for any amount of time, you know that we've been having issues with spectrum with our internet. So the spectrum guy is here. We're going to, um, take it off of our laptop and put it on our iPad and see if we have any issues with the connectivity. So I'm going to be doing a demo on facing. Wonderful. All right. Well, so thank you everybody. I'll, I'll put the pattern and thank I'll you, send this Lorraine. pattern link. Thank you. Perfect. Perfect. And Mary Beatty says boundaries. Absolutely. So yeah, Mary Beatty is kind of my little person who says, Hey, you look like crap. You need to take a day off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we do, we kind of just, we're always trying to be on the go and think of new things and we stop, um, you know, we, it, it just gets kind of crazy. So it's good to set those boundaries, take time Thank to, you. to rethink life. Yeah. Thank you, Lorraine, Her for joining us. Thank you. Purchase the fabric from Beth. If you're going to get it, she's the person. She's always, she's the first one to order it. So get it from her. All right. Take care. Yes. All right. Perfect. Thank you, Lorraine. Okay. So stay tuned. Devin is getting the iPad. Um, and then I'm going to do a demo on, um, I'm going to do a demo on facing because I kind of did one the other day, but we're going to do a more thorough one today as soon as he gets the iPad. Um, Roger was supposed to get it, but he wasn't listening to the cues. He's on his, he, I think he's on his phone. Um, okay, so Devin's here, hang on a second. And then I do wanna tell you, thank you Sue for reminding me that, um, thank you for reminding me. We do have Wild Wednesdays live at um, two o'clock. So I will post that on the top of our Facebook page. Hey Connie, how are you? Okay, so Roger is going to start up the iPad so that the Spectrum Guide, although Spectrum Guide, they did say it was freezing towards the end of it. Uh-oh, Mary Beatty, I know, trying to keep Roger on task. Okay, let me see. I'm going to try to add him to this. Can you add yourself to the stream? Okay, hang on a second. Devin, come tell him a joke. Okay, ladies, hang on a second. Tell me a joke, Kevin. Tell me a joke. Okay, can you hear me? Ask them if they can hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, oh, there's an echo. Can you turn your mic off? This is what happens when we have too many devices. We're not technical, so we definitely have technical challenges. So we are going to um, show you how to do facing for a quilt. So there's lots of different ways to bind your quilt. Um, we've gone over the traditional ways, um, but a lot of times if you're doing a show quilt, you want to be able to pull um, fabric to the back and create your closure that way. So here's one that we've done. So you see how there's no binding. So if you have a different um, top and bottom, you're not going to, it's going to just be that whatever your quilt top is. So a lot of show quilts, you're going to want to do this way. All right. Do you have any questions or comments, Roger? Because I can't read them now. No. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to show you real quick what it would look like with traditional. Okay, follow me over here. What it would look like with traditional binding. Here you go. So you see how the, the sky is a different color than the floor, uh, all of the fauna and um, flowers here. So here you've got the, the binding, which creates a good little border accent, but you might not want that. It might be too contrasty. And then here we have a flange binding. So here there's a little accent of a binding and this is sewn down by machine. So there's always different options for binding, but today we're gonna show you how to do a flange binding. So we kind of showed you the other day and I've been experimenting with it because, um, you know, as with anything in the quilting world, there's always 75 different ways to do it. So with this one, what I did is I sewed a sleeve 
that is um, nine inches wide. I ironed it in half and then I put steam a seam on the back side. But I don't really like how the steam a seam has adhered. So there's a little bit of a gap here and it doesn't really stick very firm no matter how much I iron it. Could be, and you might learn from my experience, it could be that it was a bad batch of steam a seam because usually I use whatever steam a seam I can get. I don't get it off of the box brand new. So it could be a bad um, batch of steam a seam, but I think that the steam a seam is just, it's not my favorite way. So I'm gonna show you over here. Um, this one, I actually did little pockets on the edges. So a little triangle here, but um, I didn't do the sleeve at the same time, but I hand stitched down the, what I folded over. So I'm gonna show you here real quick. This is the process. So here I've got um, the nine inch sleeve that I folded in half. I ironed the steam seam on it, but I'm not in love with the steam seam. So I'm not gonna have the steam seam on the sides. I'm actually gonna try the unique stitch fabric glue, which I left over here. So I'm not gonna do it today during the live because you've already done a lot of the live, but I'll tell you on um, Friday or Monday how it works. So unique stitch is a sewing with a tube. It's a fast drying adhesive. So Penny Barger is the one who actually told us this is how she does her binding and she has entered it into a lot of quilt shows. So what I'm gonna do, I started with the steam seam on the sleeve, but I do not, I, I just don't like it. So I'm gonna try, I didn't put anything on these. So I might have to actually um, uh, hand stitch it down if it doesn't work with the unique stitch fabric glue, but it should. So then I took four inch strips the length of my fabric, uh, the length of my quilt. So I've got four inch, this was a four inch strip. So it was like this. And then I just ironed it in half with the wrong sides to make a two inch strip. And then I cut it the exact size of my edges, laid it down here to create a casing all the way around the quilt. And then I'm just sewed it completely around the entire quilt. And then once it's stitched, you're gonna clip the edges cause you don't want too much bulk in the corners. Oops, I sewed in a pin here. So now you guys can learn from me if I made any mistakes since I just did it super quick, like five minutes before the live, you can learn if I did any mistakes or if I did anything wrong. So you're gonna flip it like this and then once it's flipped and of course it always acts up a little bit when you girls are watching so when i fuse it or use my stitch it, and i'll go back and i'll poke these out a little bit more but when you use your iron stick uh your unique stitch glue i'll just put a bit of the glue right here to adhere it and then i do think Pe uh, penny said we could iron it and then my sleeve is going to come right on top of that like this and i'm just going to roll it till it's exactly where i want it and then i'll use an iron to get it to stay to lay flatter but you see how that is going to be the facing so it just pulls it to the back side right like that. All right, do you girls have any questions? Cause Roger's being quiet. I pissed him off this morning. So, <laughs> so he's not- I cannot follow your movements and read at the same time. Okay. Okay, let me see girls. I'm gonna look on my phone. Mary Beatty says S-1 unique stitch in my bag, thanks. Okay, so, <laughs> so uh, Mary, I love you. Mary's starting our Friday sale today. Mary, I will make the unique stitch S1. So if you comment an S, that means you're committing to buying it. So S1 will be unique stitch for Friday's sale. 
but I'll put it in Mary's bag for today. Then she wants to know how wide are the side pieces? The side pieces are four inches. You're gonna cut them four inches by the length or of your quilt. So the where you're the one that you do that's your sleeve, you're gonna cut nine inches. And that one you're gonna pin to the front side of your quilt. And I started with the steam seam, but look at how how it did not adhere. And my iron was very hot. So it could just be old crappy steam seam. I'm not really sure. Probably one of you threw it in the trash can and I dug it out because I'm cheap like that. So you're going to take this, your sleeve, which is nine inches and one inch less than the width of your quilt. So if your quilt's 32 inches, you're gonna cut your sleeve nine inches by 31 inches, iron it in half, and you're also gonna wanna hem your the outside edges. See how I've, I've hemmed this right here? I rolled it under twice and hemmed it so that I would have a finished edge. And then you're going to put it to on the front side of your quilt, and then you're gonna flip it to the back side. And in theory, the steam seam should work fabulously. Then the side of my quilt is going to lay down first. And then the sleeve is gonna go right on top of it. So you create your sleeve as you're creating your facing. So this is, once I roll it over, that is going to finish like that, okay? So you get this effect here. This one has the facing. Is if UPS comes or post office? Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So then I just want to show you girls real quick, just so we give um, do a the spectrum guy some time to see if we get fuzzy or not. Um, Oh, Diana says it was freezing. Um, okay. So. Diana here says, won't that steam a seam prevent you from putting your rod through it? No, because. So this one's already finished with the steam a seam. So see how the rod goes right here. Can you see that, Diana? It's very slick. It seems like it should, but when you lay it down first, so that it get so when you lay down all your edges, you um you're gonna lay down the top, which is your sleeve first. So this is my nine inch folded in half sleeve, and then I'm gonna lay down my four inch folded in half, so my two inch edges and bottom, and then when you flip it over, it. The sides go down first and the sleeve goes right on top of it. And then here is the opening for your sleeve. Okay. And then I wanna show you real quick. I just did a repair on a quilt. So this is for a gal who, um, a customer who's gate made these quilts for her grandkids years ago and they've worn them out um, I've still got another one upstairs. It's so threadbare. I'll post the original photo of it. But what I did is I just kind of created a collage. So this was the center of the quilt and we've cut out all the rest because it really was not salv salvageable. But this is going to be a wall hanging now. So there were so many holes and um, we ripped out all the quilting. Do you need me to go back further? Yeah. Okay, so you can see I've just added fabrics like right you're going to want to get in close because you it's such a good patch job you can't even see it. So like right here was a huge hole and I just um, put a fabric patch on top of it and then I put some coordinating fabrics over here because here there were some great big holes also. You can kind of see right there it's a little bit threadbare but there was just gaping holes here. So this is all where I just patched it. Um, and then up here in the snow um, on the mountains, it was just one big flapping mountain. So I just put some um, upholstery fabrics on it to give it some texture. And then I just top stitched it right on. So I tried to leave it as original as possible. Um, 
But then here I put in, I had some leftover tree trunks um, that I had done with the Fabric Magic. So I put some of that in there. And then I added some tool to give the lake some dimension because right here where you, it was too flat. So right here and right here, I just added some tool to give it a little bit of dimension. And then I tried to square it up, but there's some places like right here, I'm gonna have to go back and add a piece of fabric right here because the whole quilt, just random pieces just weren't there. But you can see here where there were holes in the tree, I just added some fabric. So this is just to give you guys some ideas that if you do wear out your quilts, you can always um, make them new again. So um, this is the next one. I'm going to put an, a facing on this this afternoon for this customer. But here she had a big hole here. So I just added some felted wool to create some rocks because th basically this whole part was open. So just to give you some ideas of different things that you can do with quilts, even if they're worn out, you can, you can save them. So here it is. Okay, Mary Beatty says she wants to try this process. She does not enjoy hand stitching the sleeve. Um, no, I think it's gonna work with the unique stitch. I think it's gonna work, Mary. I think we might be in luck. Hey, Joan Jeffers, it's good to see you. Um, okay. Well, that steam seem to prevent you from putting, nope. Um, okay, I think we answered all those questions. Mary Beatty, it was the center of a bed quilt, but it, the kids had used it for like 30 years. It was so threadbare. There was just gaping holes in it, um, but they wanted it because their grandma made it. So. This, um, the, the one upstairs is actually still a bed quilt and I'm just gonna go in. I think it doesn't need as much repair. It's not threadbare. So I think I can just go in and um, just kind of stitch up where it's come apart. The seams still look like they're in pretty good shape. Um, thank you, Diana. Okay, do you girls have any other questions? Otherwise, we will see you this afternoon at two o'clock on Wild Wednesdays Live. So you have just enough time to go make yourself a sandwich and pour yourself a drink. Um, and I know Peggy's on here. It's one o'clock somewhere or everywhere. So, um, so we'll see you at two o'clock. Have a good afternoon. And at the celebration on Friday. And no, I'm done. You, I'm done. I'm just killing time. <laughs>